What is going on, guys? My name is Hussein, and I'd like to discuss this thing. Optimistic versus pessimistic concurrency control. It's a very interesting thing, and uh, the web is filled with confusing uh, articles about this topic. So I'd like to go to back to the basics because this channel is all about the basics. It's all about the fundamentals. It's all about the base, 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 base. All about that base, that base, no trouble. So yeah, we're going to talk about the fundamentals of of optimistic concurrency control. Notice that I didn't use the word locks here, okay? Because it's 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 a it's a catch twenty two, and it's really an oxymoron to use locks with optimistic controls. So let's talk about that and and explain why I don't think it's a good idea. What it is first? Why do we need it? And how about we jump into it? Let's define for. Uh, let's sort of find just for the English word optimism versus pessimism, right? Or optimistic versus pessimism. You can skip this part if you don't want to, but I'd like to start there because as a non-English speaker, it's very important for me to understand this word in order to actually know what's the next thing because otherwise it's just a tech word that we don't link it with the real word. So the idea of Pessimistic. Let's take an example. Let's say it's a it's a cloudy weather, which is beautiful. I love cloudy weather. But you you want to go out to the park. However, you don't know if it's gonna rain or not. So the the pessimistic approach is to take an umbrella just in case. However, right, it, it's gonna cost you, right? Because taking an umbrella with you is gonna be a little bit of inconvenience. So you have to carry this stupid umbrella with you all the time, which is like, ugh, right? So that's the pessimistic look. It's like, so you, you're, you're, you're essentially uh, pessimistic of the scenario. It's like, oh, it's gonna happen. So you, you take the worst case that is gonna happen. The, the, the optimistic approach is basically, so you know what? I have a feeling that it's not gonna rain. So I'm not going to look like an idiot and I'm not going to take the umbrella with me. So, and as a result, worst case scenario, I'm going to run to my car or, or buy an umbrella. So, and this is my philosophy in life. By the way. <laughs> it's just like, eh, eh, anything It's like anything that just happened, I'll deal with it when it happens. I'm not going to take uh, extra precautions or anything like that. Ugh, it's there. Or, I mean, just throw in the umbrella in, uh, in the car and, get it over with but this is the idea guys so let's uh let's move to uh, databases when it comes to optimistic concurrency controls and and pessimistic concurrency control so this is specifically when you have a database that is centralized and you have two transactions cons or multiple transactions trying to access the same row right Reading is not really much of a problem. However, if one transaction is writing and the other transaction is reading, then how do you know what do you exactly you want here? Do you want this transaction to write first and then this transaction will read this change? Or do you want this transaction to read, to always read the consistent uh, the uh, row and then when no matter what this change is happening i shouldn't see these changes right so this is referred to as isolation levels where every transaction has almost like a, a scope right of things that it can see it says like, okay uh, i i started this transaction and these value is now one and even if someone else changed that value while i am in the transaction and doing my own stuff i didn't end the transaction I should always see the value of one. Now you can argue with whether the other party of the other transaction actually changed the value and committed. Do you want to see committed value? Do you want to see dirty values? Do you not want to see anything at all? So that is the idea of concurrency control. So there are a lot of questions. What do you do, right? And, and as a result, take a simple example where two transactions are actually writing at the same time, right? Both of them, and we talked about this in, in, the, in the double booking problem. Check it out right here. So how do you prevent 
uh, two people booking the same seat in the cinema. We actually built something similar like that, right? So, so check out the video where we actually prevent it. So what do you do, right? If, if two, two, two transactions read the seats and both of them at the same time said, oh, the seat is available, and the same, both of them at the same time wrote, okay, let's book the seat. So in this case, you will have double booking problem. And essentially, this applies to banking, applies to all of stuff. What do we do? Let's talk about the pessimistic control, uh, concurrency control. It says, when a... Uh, uh, a transaction is attempting to update, it needs to essentially, to, to, to achieve this pessimistic control, concurrency control, or PCC, I don't think it's called PCC, yeah, it's called PCC, then it acquires an exclusive lock. An exclusive lock, we talked about that, check those stuff, it means, yo, people, I am now owning this. Nobody should read it. Nobody should update it. Nobody, don't touch this because I am in the middle of updating that. And when I say middle, this is maybe microseconds or milliseconds, very small amount of time. I'm talking about very small amount of time. But it's enough to, to cause a little bit of congestion. So a quad explosive lock. So if if that transaction came at the same time and tried to read that role, it's, mm, it's going to be paused. That why? Because we're 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 pessimistic, right? We're 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 we really don't don't trust anything. I'm taking my umbrella, babe. I'm taking it with me because I'm don't want to look like an idiot. So we'll take that stuff, and then the transaction will just go and uh, does other stuff, maybe read other stuff, and then update. And then once that transaction goes out of the scope, what the hell does that mean? It means meh. I'm done. Commit or meh. Uh, something happened, a uh, primary constraint, bleh, go out of uh, of scope and then roll back. That is when the lock is released and this transaction is still waiting. And then once it sees that the lock is gone, poof, it will unlock and start reading. And guess what? When it start reading in this case, the, the row or the value or the seat or the, or the cinema or booking system or the balance or anything, it's going to see the latest value. And this is what you want in this case, right? That's what we want because we want the, we want only one to update at the same time. So now you're getting always a serialized, a nice serialized view, right? So all these transactions came after each other. And then you're going to do all things. This is the pessimistic approach, which I love. I like I like, I like to be, uh, when, when it comes to databases, not much in real life. <laughs> right? So I like, I like to take my cautions when it comes to databases. It's like, yeah, let's take a look. What, what's worse can happen? What's the bad thing about this? Well, you guessed it. These locks might not be much, right? In uh, raw locks, especially, uh, not with two transactions, but imagine hundreds of thousands of transactions, right? trying to update the same role. Now I will question, I will question your data model and database design in this case. Like why the hell so many transactions updating the same role, right? That's that's a database design question, which, uh, uh, so you start yelling at the DBA here who designed the database in a way, in application so that all these transactions acquiring the same role. I doubt that sh this should happen, but again, there's so many things. Optimistic control is not a solution for everything. You have to think, right? Why are we have 3 million transactions acquiring the same role? That shouldn't happen, right? So, hey, you have to be a little bit pragmatic when it comes to that. Programmer, programmer is the best book. It's really good. Just way of thinking. All right, so that's the tr the optimistic, the, the pessimistic. Yeah, obviously, if you have this scenario, it's going to go slow. You're going to get poses and... and, and the user experience will not be as great. So meet the optimistic concurrency control where it says, eh, let's not take the umbrella with us. Let's just let them run with each other. So let both of these guys take the same seat, right? Let them read. So let them read. The, let's say this is the seat I want to book. Both of them read the same seat and says, oh, it is available, right? So go ahead and read it, okay? And the next thing is go and update that. And when it's update, 
right? It says, and this is, this is going to update. At the end of the transaction, you is you are you is you are responsible to check is the value that I just read changed. If it if it didn't change, then nobody actually changed something beneath me, right? So you're good. But if it did change, you are responsible to just the trash the trash the. Uh, uh, the row or the transaction and start over and that's what I don't like about optimistic control right if you have this restarting behavior I'd rather pause and get the correct result you you see where I'm going with this right I, I always have a an, a bias towards something but you as as an engineer you get to decide and you get to to kind of argue with it and then have a discussion this is this is all about nothing there's no right or wrong in software engineering guys we all make decisions. We all think, and it all depends. It all depends on what you're trying to do. It, don't don't be afraid of voicing your opinion. Call everyone out. Call me out. I don't care. It's because we just learn. So yeah. So both of them will come that and 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 essentially, if the value changed, we roll back. How does this is implemented? So many implementation for it. One implementation is uh, as essentially application level um, uh, implementation where the application itself says mm, okay i'm gonna read this now right and then i'm gonna start doing my own thing and if, if when I'm, I'm 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 gonna uh, before i want to update it i'm gonna read it again did the value change so you need at least read committed isolation level to do that right otherwise you you not see the outside world so now if that changed, right, then you're responsible to abort the transaction, right? That's that's the idea here, right? So you always check this before that. That's that's however very flawed because there is there is this thing that is I, I forgot what it's called, but essentially I'm gonna put it in the screen. Essentially, the moment you read. How do you, between the moment you read and you write, this little bit of a small millisecond, that transaction could have, another transaction could have come and updated your stuff. So you can even trust this thing. So that's another a problem with the optimistic control, concurrency control. So, so there's a lot of ways that we can do this at the database level, right? Where you, you will just leave the database to do the optimistic concurrency control for you. I know there is a lot of application ORNs and stuff like that that does that for you. I don't know how personally they work, right? If But to me, if it's at the application level, there is this, uh, uh, the chance where, uh, let me actually Google that. Yeah, it is called time of check to time of use. T-O-C-T-O-U, right? You're checking, between the checking and between using, someone could have sneaked in and, and actually did that. That's why locks are great, right? With optimistic concurrency control, yeah, you don't have locks. That's the trick. Optimistic concurrency control should not have locks. That's why the idea of an optimistic lock is very confusing to me, right? It's just, wait a second, what locks are you talking about, right? But it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an application level lock. Think about it this way, right? So essentially, if that changed, right? Let's say you read the value and then before you start writing, updating the value, read it again, see if it changes. And if it changes, you don't trust it. You roll back with an error saying optimistic lock error. That's some Googling, uh, from Googling, I noticed these errors coming up, optimistic lock error. Again, this is, I don't recall any database doing such thing. All databases don't have a concept of optimistic lock. They have optimistic concurrency control. Uh, now, this is another thing I'm not sure about, right? Uh, you can do uh, an, a, a, a serialize, serializable level at the Postgres where you essentially, when, when both transactions come in, you 
check the version at the beginning of the transaction and check the version of the row at the at the end of the transaction and and fail when the version actually changes right this is actually again a very deep discussion topic i possibly can't discuss all of all of this stuff in 15 minutes but i thought i'd make a vlog just just to discuss this out loud and get your opinion with you guys that working with these kind of thing what do you guys think i know some of you deal with these application level uh, locks and and dealing with uh you know database level event sourcing and stuff like that uh let me know what do you guys think about this topic optimistic con con concurrency control versus pessimistic concurrency control what are what do you prefer uh, sometime the optimistic concurrency control can win if you don't really uh, crave consistency. So you can give up some consistency when it comes to this stuff. Yeah, so databases don't just magically take care of that stuff. You have to be responsible of acquiring the log and doing all this, sometimes this uh, low-level stuff. Let me guys uh, know what you think. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.